What's going on on Texas football? I'm CJ Vogel, joined by Jerry Hamilton today for a little Sunday fun day a a action today. Of course, Texas uh, was back on the practice field yesterday for its second scrimmage of the day or of the spring. But as a result, we were able to see a number of uh, prospects on campus uh, yesterday, uh, you know, checking out practice, checking out the staff, and of course, seeing campus and everything that entails uh, Texas football. Uh, a busy day for the staff, not as busy as the first scrimmage on uh, April 6th. Nonetheless, a lot of bodies on campus. Only a few in the 2025 class, Jackson Christian, Keoti Armstrong, uh, Caleb Chester, uh, more so a heavy 2026 presence, uh, especially on the offensive line, which we'll get into here in a bit as well. Uh, but Jerry, wanted to get your thoughts on the day as a whole. Of course, you know, a, a little quieter compared to what we saw two weeks ago, uh, but we, uh, of course, expect a big week coming up again, maybe a little breather for the staff uh, as they head into the week of the spring game. Yeah, I think other than Kyle Flood, it was kind of a quiet day, right? Um, and Terry Joseph, there's some DBs on campus, but uh, yeah, I think I, I think look, the the 25s that were on campus were that was impactful, um, and I know we're going to run down those guys, but especially Jackson Christian and Cody Armstrong. I mean, that those are two of the targets, top targets for Texas. One offensive line, one tight end, both out of that Golden Triangle area. Yep. Um, so it was, uh, and then 2026, the most recent offer in 2026, linebacker Tyon King, which we'll talk about. He was on campus, another Golden Triangle kid. Uh, but it was, it was, it was big for Kyle Flood yesterday uh, because the 25 guy will mention Jackson Christian and the 26s. Yeah, we'll start with Jackson Christian, of course, on campus today. He's been a familiar name with Texas recruiting for a while now. Uh, has made it to campus a number of times. Already scheduling a return visit. He will be back on campus Tuesday to catch practice number 13. Feels like, uh, you know, a pretty yeah. good indication of what's going on here. Yeah, that that's that kind of falls in line with what Elijah Barnes did, right? Elijah Barnes mm -hmm. was on campus on April 6th. Then he came back late in the week. Um, and and obviously, we, we know where that uh, recruitment went. Now, we're not saying for sure that's what's going to happen with Jackson Christian, but we will say this. Uh, that is, you drive from Port Natchez to Austin on a Saturday on a Friday, Saturday, and then you you drive back. That's, I mean, that's a four-hour drive, right? Then you come right back Tuesday. You know, that's a pretty good sign for Texas, I would say. And and Jackson Christian, look, that's a guy that Kyle flooded. Similar, it, maybe not as much of a national recruit as Jaden Chapman, but it's similar in that Kyle Flood was the first Power 5 school to really go all in on uh, Jackson Christian and get on in on him. That's kind of – and they got him to campus earlier than some other people. That's the same thing they have with Jaden Chapman. So there's a similarity for Kyle Flood and, and that recruitment. And, uh, and Jackson Christian's going to stay close to home. I mean, it, it, this is a Texas or Texas A&M decision. Uh, so uh, the fact that he's been on campus at Texas now, I believe, four times, maybe five since he was offered uh, uh, over a year ago. Um, and is coming back again uh, on Tuesday. Uh, it speaks for how well Texas is doing in this recruitment. We'll say that. Yeah, uh, real quick, talk about him as a player. Back-to-back -back state championships down there at Port Natchez Groves. Uh, really talented player. He, he looks to me like a guy that flips a switch as an offensive lineman. Uh, from talking to him off the field, a little bit of a different player when he gets on the, in between the white lines. Yeah, he's got a little um, he he's got a little toughness to him even when you talk to him, right? I mean, he's a guy who's serious. I would say that means he doesn't have fun, but he's serious when you talk to him. Really, kind of over tackle with his answers, right? And uh, you know, again, uh, yeah, Port Natchez they lost in the state set championship his junior year, uh, sophomore year. Then they won it last year. They beat uh, South Oak Cliff. They got a little revenge there. Um, but uh, you know, I, I would say this about Jackson Christian: he is has the feet to play tackle, and he has the arm length to play tackle. He's an eighty-one inch wingspan guy, but you put all that into a guard and you have, you have a i believe a, a four star prospect he's a four star prospect for me as long as i've been doing this i don't have any doubts about it but he's got that toughness he's got the feet he's got the knee bend he's got the ankle flexion he's got the length he's got the strong hands he plays for uh, Gary Joseph's son coach Joseph there at Port Natchez they, that's a physical program that's a physical uh uh, environment down there you know it's blue collar it's tough kids right Roshan Johnson tough kid yeah. Port Natchez Groves you go down the list and Jackson Christian's one of those tough guys that happens to play on the offensive line but has athleticism with his feet and with his ability to bend yeah never a bad thing adding you know some prospects out of that golden triangle as you mentioned 
A lot of big time Texas players from the past, certainly uh, from yeah. that region. Uh, but moving to the tight end spot, because of course, one of the other big 2025 names on campus was Keody Armstrong out of Jasper, a familiar place for Texas with Ty Anthony Smith on campus. Uh, Keody actually mentioned one of those things that he liked in, in, watching about practice was seeing Ty Anthony and Smith and in practice, he kind of joked about it a little bit, uh, you know, kind of rubbing them a little bit. But uh, Texas in that tight end spot right now currently has Emory Winston in the fold looking for that second guy, whether it be Nick uh, Townsend, Keody Armstrong, or even uh, the new offered prospect uh, Edwards out of the West Coast coming in for an official visit as well. What do we think of this spot at the moment? Is Texas pushing? Is Texas in a good spot right now? For Keody Armstrong, I, I I think they're right there. I think AM's pro went into yesterday, went into the visit Saturday as, as a slight favorite, right? He was on campus with his father. Uh, his father was a uh, football player at Jasper uh, back in the day. He played with uh, Red Bryant, and Jory Adams, two guys that went to Texas AM. and uh, His father is as related to uh, the Armstrongs, all the guys that ran track out of there that were very very fast. Um, and, and so it's a it's a Jasper family. Um, and I said that because so was Ty Anthony Smith, right? It's a tight knit community, uh, in that golden triangle area is also tight knit. Uh, but I think, I think Texas is in a good spot in tight end recruiting in general. I'll say that. And Armstrong, so I put it Amari Winston and Nick Townsend into their category as more of the pass catchers, downfield threat type of guys at tight end. Then I put Armstrong and Caleb Edwards out of Oak Ridge and El Dorado Hills, who's making an official visit. June 7th through 9th. He's also told me yesterday he's coming in for the spring game uh, this weekend. So, and I put Armstrong and him, more of the bigger body guys. Uh, Armstrong's already 6'5", 250 with skinny right. ankles. He looks great physically. Uh, Caleb Edwards in that 6'6", 230 range. So those are the two types of tight ends Texas is looking for in this class. And they have four guys. Um, I actually exchanged matches, messages with LinkedIn Cure out of Kansas uh, Saturday. And he's not, says he's not going to make it back down to Texas. So, Unless something crazy happens with the official visit in June, and Texas is pretty much down to these four tight ends for two spots right now. And and I do think Texas is going to come away with two of these guys. Right. And you mentioned the way that Texas is kind of recruiting the inline more so physical of the two. And then the guys that I think have a little bit more verticality and yeah. uh, I don't want to call it speed, but they certainly have, I would say, a higher ceiling in the sense of going down the field and making yeah. plays there. Uh, what do you make of the complementary factor of the two, making sure that, you know, you have a guy like Gunnar Helm on campus at all times, but you also have a guy like Amari Nyblack who can stretch the field and become that threat for Sarkeesian. Well, Ke Keanu Armstrong, what makes him, I think, so coveted by AM, Texas, LSU, Auburn. I mean, everybody's trying to get in on him is, He's 6'5", 250 plus. He's going to be 6'5", 6'5 and a half, 260. But an athlete at the tight end position. He could be an aggressive inline blocker, difference maker in the run game. But he also is not void of athleticism. He is not a one-trick pony. He can. He's a guy who can get down the field a little bit in the passing game. So he's different than what post people are recruiting. And that makes him really highly coveted. Uh, so, I, But I, I think Texas is on the right track at the tight end position. I mean, you look at Jordan Washington who is uh, a little, you know, I think it's going to be a little bit of both uh, for Texas uh, in the next couple of years. So I think tight end spots really good right now at Texas. I like the four guys they've kind of uh, narrowed it in on in this 25 class. Um, and I think Nick Townsend is, is is easily the best athlete of the group. I think he has, I mean, he ran 10-9-2 at 230 pounds at the district track meet. So that's Elijah Barnes, Riley Pettijon, level athlete. So yeah, he is a different type of dude at tight end. Coyote's different in his own way as well. Um, and, and if Amari Winston, let's say he stays in the class, he's visited some other places, we'll see what happens. Um, then Texas gets one of those two. They've had a great tight end class. With you 100%. It sounds like uh, the 2025s, although not necessarily a lot of them on campus yesterday, Texas certainly made uh, the most of the guys that they had on campus. The last one I want to mention was Caleb Chester, the defensive back in the 2025 class on campus yesterday. We didn't get to talk to him. It felt like he stayed you know, a little bit later than some folks on campus yesterday. Uh, but Texas, again, kind of evaluating that defensive back spot. Where does he fit in right now? And how, I mean, what, what do you make of his recruitment at the moment? He's got one, he's one of the two defensive backs that's visiting June 7th through 9th. Um, Caleb Chester out of Fort Bend Marshall, the corner we're talking about, and Cortland Guillory, uh, the corner slash safety from Klein Oak. Both those guys scheduled to come in June 7th through 9th. Obviously, I think Caleb Chester's on the board. I think he's high on the board. I think Dorian Brew and Aiden Anding uh, from Ruston are higher uh, 
uh, mm-hmm. or maybe more a little bit more priority targets. But Caleb Chester's a he, he's a really smooth moving corner. Uh, he's got te- he's got Texas, he's got Arkansas, he's got AM. and um, he, He's got schools like that scheduled for official visits in June. Uh, so he is a very good prospect in his own right. Maybe just not frame as big of a frame as an Aiden Anding does at a similar height, right? I mean, I think that could be uh, the difference between those two, but he's a very good player. Somebody at Texas has been recruiting for a while. Terry Joseph and Blake Gideon went by the school uh, in January. So he's a kid. Caleb Chester's a guy that could end up in the class uh, potentially, depending on what happens with Dorian Brew and Aiden Anding. Of course. And then now heading into the 26s, uh, it did feel like it was a almost a call of flood day. And Bobby and I talked about it earlier this morning uh, about the way that scrimmage went. And it felt like the first team unit on the offensive line certainly had a good day. That was, you know, kind of kicked back to us a little bit by the recruits saying, yeah, we loved watching Kelvin Banks, uh, Cam Williams, DJ Campbell, Jake Majors. They were all mentioned to us a number of times, but off the field and for Kyle flood there also a busy day with the 2026 class in which it really started to feel like we got a good idea of the big board for the Texas Longhorns on the offensive line group for next cycle. Felix Ojo, Brett uh, Colage, Toa Katoa, who 366 pounds, Jerry, looked pretty good today. Uh, certainly, you know, as good as I've seen 366 pounds. Uh, but talk about right now those guys on campus and where you see that group, at least on the offensive line for 26, moving in the, in the, in the future. Yeah, I think John Turntine from North Crowley is the top guy on the board. He was at AM yesterday. He's been to Texas twice. He'll be back at uh, Texas possibly this week for the spring game. We'll see on that. But he'll be back this summer. Uh, John Turntine is maybe the best tackle in the country in 26, so out of North Crowley. He's he's the highest on the board. Um, but Toa Katoa, I mean, 366 pounds, that was a good weight yesterday because there are some people were saying he was 385 pounds. Right. Uh, he's not. He's 20 pounds less than that. Uh, looked really good. Um, you know, I know we talked to Toa. Uh, I talked to his father a little bit. His father was so is so big on just the place for growth for his son and development as a football player. But he mentioned also mentioned growth, growth as a, as a young man. Uh, I think Texas did very well with uh, Toa Katoa yesterday. And, I, and I'll say this: Tarantine, Toa Katoa, Brett Colage, those guys could commit to Texas right now. I talked with Brett Colage yesterday, the uh, uh, guard out of IMG who's played his freshman year at Valor uh, Christian there in the Denver area, uh, transferred out to IMG for a sophomore year. I mean, Texas told him he could commit today if he wanted to. I mean, and he wasn't going to end this process there, but that's how much Texas likes Brett Colage. So um, you talk about those three guys, Turntine, uh, Toa Katoa, and Brett Colage, and those three guys could absolutely commit to Texas right now. Then there's Felix Ojo. Uh, from Mansfield Lake Ridge, an upside offensive tackle that Texas has offered. Um, and I think that process will continue 6'7", 275, kind of similar frame-wise uh, to Lamont Rogers in the 25 class. I'm not sure he's quite as broad as Lamont, but similar frame size as Lamont Rogers in that 26 class. But again, the evaluation process is just getting going, uh, for, truly, for 26. I mean, they know some of the guys who are no-brainers. Um, and Kyle Flood told – uh, Katoa and Colage that he's going to be out to see them in May during the spring evaluation period. But just think about how many more players uh, each right. coach is going to see at a position in 2026, starting uh, at the beginning of May during that spring evaluation period. One thing I wanted to touch back on with this group is it feels like there's not a, a, a clear distinction, but you have a good idea of who's going to be your tackles and who's going to be your guards of the group that was on campus. Yeah. Of course, you mentioned John Turntine. We know he's a tackle, wasn't on campus, but again, someone in Texas expects to get back and certainly will continue recruiting all the way through with that one. But Felix Ojo, you know, six seven, lengthy arms. That's a tackle guy. Brett Kolojay looks to yeah. me like a guy that can maul you on the interior. And of course, Toa Katoa. Uh, I mean, we've watched the tape, Jerry. That's a guy that uh, you keep in the guard spot and you pull him a little bit and, you know, folks around the third quarter on the defensive line are not going to be too happy. Uh, So right now there is some clear distinction with where Texas is going uh, on the offensive line. I know there's a ways away, but a good group of guys on campus. Uh, Of course, Jordan Caraway, 2027 out of 40 on campus as well uh, for the Longhorns yesterday. Uh, moving on. Okay, oh, go, go ahead, CJ. I was going to get. I was going to move on to Tyon King, who we need to get to. But I think that's where you're headed. Yes, I, I was going to move on back to uh, Tyon King. Of course, the Port Arthur yep. Memorial uh, a linebacker who was offered April 8th made it to campus on uh, on Saturday. You know, that's a quick turnaround from Port Arthur Memorial. Uh, again, 
he, he, it sounded to me like he really enjoyed his day when we talked to him yesterday after the trip. Uh, that's a recruitment. Texas is familiar with that area. And, of course, it looks like, uh, you know, Johnny Nansen is, is going to be pushing a little bit for the, the talented linebacker. Yeah, I think this was a huge offer for him. And I'm not saying this recruitment's over because a has offered him and been on him a long time. He's got national offers. He'll go see a lot of places. Uh, but you could just tell talking to him. Some of these kids you just talk to, you kind of know how big of an offer it was. And I was told that was a big offer when it happened. But then you talk to Tank King uh, in person, and you could tell that was a big, impactful offer. Um, like he works out with Ty Anthony Smith. Um, he, he knows uh, Jalen Gilbo. Obviously, they're very close with Gilbo. But he's a Port Arthur Memorial guy, uh, as is Tyon King. Right? Those kids are tied together in the Golden Triangle. A lot of those kids are close, especially guys that play the same position. They work out together sometimes, work out with the same people. Um, but Tyon King, you know, look, his father went to Port Arthur Lincoln back in the day, uh, played football at Lincoln, played small college football. Uh, but, you know, it, this was a big offer for him. Obviously, Jamal Charles, he knew that. Kenneth Lofton in the NBA, who's a cousin of Jamal Charles, also a cousin of Tyon King. Um, so there's a lot of ties with Texas and that Golden Triangle uh, right now. And King, he, he's connected to a lot of those guys. I mean, and, and so here's the great thing for Texas recruiting King. He can pick up the phone and ask Ty Anthony Smith anytime about Texas. Hey, what there, well, this is what Coach Nansen told me. How's it been for you, right? right? That is such a great spot to be in from a recruiting perspective. He also plays on the same seven-on-seven seven team uh, with Kosi Opala, uh, uh, the twenty other 2026 linebacker that Texas really likes. He's out of Maid Creek. was on campus a couple of weeks ago. So they play on the same seven-on-seven seven team. They'll be comparing notes. Uh, but those are the two of the top linebackers in 26, and Texas now offer both. And King had a great visit yesterday. He was there with his mom. Yeah, sounds like a good day. Of course, we talked to him a little bit afterward. Very, very impressive body early yes. on. Oh, yeah. Uh, and and he's, he's been starting since freshman year at, a, at the 5A, 6A level in Texas as an inside linebacker. Not a lot of guys do that. So that speaks to his instincts, his toughness, his ability to uh, – uh, to retain information from a staff and then them trust to put him on the field as a freshman at that level of football. Absolutely. Good prospect over there. Uh, I wanted to get to two defensive backs here real quick, Jerry. One is Blaine Bradford out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, was on campus today. Uh, mentioned Texas in his top three at the moment, LSU and Notre Dame. That's certainly noteworthy, of course. And then Zalus Hicks, who is a top 40 uh, caliber prospect out of Carrollton, Georgia, made it to campus uh, yesterday with his seven on 17, 24 karat. Uh, gold. He was on campus. A bit of a surprise there, uh, but certainly one that Texas won't shy away from. Has 26 offers at the moment as well. So uh, talk a, a little bit about Blaine. Of course, he was one of the last prospects we saw leave the facility before we departed for the afternoon. Yeah, so Blaine uh, Bradford out of Baton Rouge area. Uh, that's a guy that Terry Joseph's been on for about a year. Uh, they offered him a, a while back and a second time on campus, I believe. Um, also a baseball player. Uh, from uh, I'm pretty sure, but uh, he really likes he really likes Texas. I think he likes the academic football combination at Texas, as you mentioned, and that falls in line with Notre Dame, right? And Texas and Notre Dame are battling uh, the home to le legitimately the hometown team LSU, right? And uh, the season LSU has defensively, I think that's going to be big. Um, you know, I, I think there's a you know a couple of family. Uh, issue, uh, issues that, that could keep him close to home, let's say. And not that he couldn't go to Notre Dame. I mean, kids venture off all the time. But if something that could keep – there's something it, within the family that could keep him from a drive from home instead of a flight from home potentially. But I, I'll say this. I think Terry Joseph's done a good job in that recruitment. Um, I think Notre Dame, uh, Marcus Freeman's doing a really good job in that recruitment. Then they both have to beat out LSU. But that was great to get him on campus. And he said he'll be back again, which I totally believe. So uh, that's a guy that in 2026 for Texas fans to keep tabs on for sure. Absolutely. Uh, all in all, I would say a pretty successful day considering how big it was, you know, not the largest, but certainly enough for some uh, some movement. Texas made some good impact early on with some 26s yesterday. Uh, and, and of course, Jackson Christian coming back to campus on Tuesday. We'll be monitoring that uh, very closely uh, as, as the week you know, begins, uh, of course, the spring game, April 20th. Texas will be hosting a number of big time prospects. Uh, next weekend as well. Real quick, I wanted to get your thoughts on the spring game and what that recruiting weekend will entail and what you're kind of keeping an eye on early on. Yeah, so I, I think that it, it, the, it, the visit weekend or the game day is going to be impacted negatively by regional track meets, right? I mean, so some of the guys, 
Although some your 2025 guys, a, a DeCorian Moore, Kelshawn Johnson, some of those guys, they're not really impacted by the spring game. They've been on campus for games. They've been on campus for practices. Uh, both of them last weekend for practice. So that that's not the impact of it. The impact of it is when you read a visitor's list. And uh, because the regional track meets are next Friday, Saturday, that could take out six, eight potential names that would be there otherwise. So the visitor list may not have as many of those high-end guys, uh, but I think Texas is going to get a number of guys on campus. And and there's some big visits. I mean, we're going to be talking about it all week on ontexasfootball.com. Go be an OT, uh, uh, OTF OG, by the way, for $39.95. But look, Nick Brooks, offensive lineman out of Cedar Rapids, JFK High, uh, that's a big visit because he's also scheduled to come back June 14th through 16th for an official visit. So Nick Brooks getting him on campus, that's kind of what happened with Brandon Baker's recruitment. So you never know what happens after you get him on campus for that spring game and see what happens after after that with a June official visit. Then a couple of D linemen. I mean, Malik Autry, Auburn commitment. He was back at Florida this weekend. He's mm-hmm. scheduled to be in town next week for the spring game. We'll see. He's been scheduled to be at Texas before, and that hadn't worked out. We'll see. Then there's Kevin Wynn out of Greene County in Greensboro, Georgia, 6'3", 320-pound, over-the-ball, defense four-star defensive tackle. He's telling people he's coming in for the spring game next week, and that would be a big visit. Again, that's all before Kenny Baker has a chance to go out and really get into the spring evaluation recruiting window. You can get two or three of these kids on campus on the defensive line next week, and it sets you up to get an official visit in June. So I think Texas is going to have a really good vi- list of, of visitors for the spring game, but those track meets are going to keep about four, five, six, seven, eight guys that would <laughs> otherwise attend from attending. While a bummer, of course, like you said, a number of these guys at this point have seen Texas yeah. early, you know, from other and they'll be back for June official visits, of course, which of this will be a, a nice little conclusion of the spring into that the, that summer visit uh, uh, window later on in June. So for Texas right now, I think, uh, of course, I had some momentum with Ricky Stewart and now Elijah Barnes on back to back weekends. Uh, spring game, another opportunity to see one popper or so, uh, but a lot of movement you'll see after the June official visits into the June, uh, July and August there as that window continues. We've seen that time and time again. Yeah, I, th- I think we're going to see three, four guys potentially move off their timelines coming up in, their, in the next uh, week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, what have you, ahead of those June official visits. I think Texas uh, will get two or three more as it sounds right now. These things change. It's fluid. I, I could see Texas getting two or three more commits here prior to June official visits. It's big news. Big, big, big stuff right there, Jerry. Of course, we will be monitoring the spring game. We'll be having all the coverage from this past weekend on ontexasfootball.com. So become an OTF OG for just $39.95 uh, using the code OTF OG at checkout. So come join us, join the community. Of course, get all the nuggets from Jerry and I and Bobby Burton about the team and everything that goes on with Texas football. Uh, but for today, this was the little Sunday fun day, a recruiting recap from Saturday's uh, you know, scrimmage number two of the spring. Uh, for Jerry Hamilton, I'm CJ Vogel, and this has been On Texas Football. Y'all have a good weekend, and uh, let's go see Scotty Scheffler bring home that green jacket. There you go. It would be number two.